Before we get started on our facing, some quick things to know about moving around the screen. If you hold down the wheel on your mouse and move back and forth, you can pan the image on the screen. If you hold down the shift key and hold down the wheel on your mouse, you can dynamically rotate the part. Down here, you can change how that rotation works, whether it's in free orbit or a constrained orbit. We're going to leave ours on free orbit. You can also select any face from the block in the corner. We can switch to a top view, or we can use the arrows to switch to different views or rotate our views. I'm going to rotate this over so I'm looking at more or less an isometric view of the part. The turning face command is a toolpath to remove rough stock from the face of the cylinder. This can be a single cut for finishing or multiple cuts to remove bulk stock from the workpiece. After we select our tool from the tool library, we will cover the parameters used for tool clearance, multiple cuts, and cut transitions. So from the turning pull down menu, I want you to select turning face. On our tool tab, we're going to select our tool. In our tool library, we're going to expand this to show the library tree. We're going to scroll down until we find our sample turning tools, and I'd like you to select the CNMT09T308DCLNR, which is a right-handed CNMT type insert. We'll give that a double click to select. You can see it immediately shows us what the toolpath is going to look like. Basically, it's taking a single cut across the face. Now, if I don't do anything else except say OK, I've completed the toolpath. Let's take a look at this from a top view, and you can see it knew where to come in along the stock and feed in along the face and then move out. So let's go back in and take a look at the rest of those parameters. I'm going to right click on top of that facing toolpath and select Edit. So there's nothing else we need to change on our tool tab, although you could adjust your feeds and speeds here. On our geometry tab, there's really nothing to select. It knows it's facing off the front of the stock, up to the face of the model. On the radii tab, we can set our clearances, outer radius, and inner radius, selecting the range of the area that we want it to machine from. Again, Fusion is smart enough to know what we need, and for something as simple as a face toolpath, we don't need to change any of this. On our Passes tab, if we wanted to take multiple passes, we would check this. It expands the dialog box and allows us to specify a step over. If I uncheck Limit Number of Step Overs, I can tell it I want two step overs of one millimeter per cut. You can also add an additional finish pass if you choose. If you do that, it will open up additional parameters for you to specify the step over for the final pass. You could even take multiple finish passes if you wanted to. On the linking tab, we can control how the tool will move from one cut to the next. It also controls how the tool will lead in and lead out of the cut. The default is to lead in and out on a 2 millimeter linear move at a 45 degree angle. There's really nothing for us to change here. We're going to say OK. So now we've modified our cut to have two passes across the front of the part. If you wanted to, you could select Simulate, and for our simulation parameters, we could tell it to show the stock. Of course, you could change the material for your stock. I prefer ceramic, and using operations to change the color. We can even look at this in a transparent view, and we'll hit Start. That looks good. We'll close Simulate. 